Hello everyone, welcome back to Ruby Lessons in Code Academy. So in the video before last we started looking at classes and in the last video we were looking at uh, scope mainly and how it's used. We looked at the global scope, we looked at the class scope and the uh, object or the in initialized scope. Today we are going to be looking at inheritance which I slightly mentioned at the end of last video. So, even though it says it's kind of a tricky concept, in my opinion, it's not. Uh, let's just read what it has to say. So, inheritance is the process by which one class takes on the attributes and methods of another. So, you create uh, a class application error, and, that, and then you create another class called uh, syntax error that inherits from application error, even though it really shouldn't, but let's just say it should. Uh, then the syntax error class would inherit everything that there is in the application error class, and you can add on extra things after it as well. So the example it uses here is slightly different. So inheritance is used to express an is a relationship. So for example, a cartoon fox is a cartoon mammal. So a cartoon fox class should inherit from a cartoon mammal class. However, a wizard is not an elf, so it shouldn't inherit from an elf class, even though they have many attributes in common. Instead, both wizard and elf could ultimately inherit from the same magical being class, or maybe even enemy class if you want were thinking about the game. Instructions, check out the code in the editor. We've defined a class application error as well as a super bad error class that inherits from application error. Note that we don't define the display error method in the body of super bad error, but it will still have the access to that method via inheritance. Click 7 submit code to see it for yourself. So think of it like a parent class and a child class. The child inherits from its parents, everything, in this case anyway. So let's just find them. We have our parent class is our application error class, and we have our child class, which is our super bad error class. So this has the method display error, which just puts out error error. Super bad error, as you can see, has nothing in its body, but because it's inheriting from application error, it gets everything that there is in application error. So you don't have to do anything else, you don't have to add anything on. So when we create an ERR, when we instantiate a class of super bad error, as you can see, and we call the display error method, even though it's not inside of our super bad error class, because it's inherited, it we can still use it. And as you can see, we get the expected output of error error. Hopefully that makes sense, I'm pretty sure it's not that difficult to get your head around. If it is, do ask in the comments down below, I will uh, answer your questions as soon as I can. But let's move on. Inheritance syntax. So as we saw, it's the lesser sign, lesser than sign. In Ruby, inheritance works like this, where the derived class is the new class you're making and the base class is the class from which that the new class inherits. You can read the uh, lesser than as inherits from. So derived class is our new class that we're making, base class is our parent class. So child class, parent class, as I will be referring to them because that's what they are actually normally referred to as. And it does make quite a lot of sense. Instructions, we've created an application class in the editor to the right. Create your own class, my app, that inherits from application. No need to put anything inside your class definition just yet. It will already have uh, inherited the initialize method. So class my app inherits from application. End. Don't forget the end like I normally do. Uh, okay. So this, even though it has nothing in its body, still has this because it inherits it. Moving on. Override. So this is another thing, interesting thing with classes. So sometimes you'll want one class that inherits from another to not only take on methods from attributes of its parents, but to override one or more of them. So you can remove old stuff and put new stuff in. Or you can keep the old stuff and add new stuff in. 
or com or just change a few things of the old methods, I believe. That's also a thing. So for instance, you might have an email class that inherits from a message. Both classes might have a send method that sends them, but the email version may have to identify valid email addresses and you use a bunch of email protocols that message knows nothing about. Or message, if you were thinking along the lines of text message, well, email is in a way a text message, if you went in that direction, but the text message could be sent on a phone maybe, and it needs a phone number instead of an email needing an email. So you wanted to completely change that one method, but everything else works fine. And you can inherit everything else that you need. Uh, okay, so rather than add a send email method to your derived class and inherit a second method you'll never use and waste memory and efficiency, you can just instead explicitly create a send method in the email class and have it do all the email sending work. So this new version of send will override, that is replace, the inherited version of uh, for any object that is an instance of email. Instructions, let's try a, a more entertaining if less realistic example. Create a new class dra dragon, okay, sure. Uh, class Dragon inherits from creature and uh, okay. Give your derived class a fight method. Def fight and as well that overrides creatures. So instead of returning punch to the chops, it should return breathes fire. Ah, okay. So if you can only do this if you use the same name as you have before. So notice fight in the creature uh, is a method and we're also defining a fight method. The exact same name, same capitalization as well. And here instead we want to return breathe spire. Exclamation mark. And hopefully it's gonna make us call it. Okay, yep, by the looks of things. Uh, so on the sl sl uh, slip fight, uh, flip side, sometimes you'll be working with a derived class. Oh, okay, it's not gonna make us call it. So uh, I will call it now. Uh, let's do. Oh, I can't remember how to call it. Oh, one second. So just as an example, I did this. Uh, I instantiated an object of dragon and called the fight method which as you can see calls breeds fire. However, if I was to comment this out and called it now, well, it still does breathe fire, but it really shouldn't do uh, because it inherits from that. This might be a Code Academy thing. So in theory, if this wasn't Code Academy, what this would return is punch to the chops. Uh, I don't know why it's not doing that. I'm pretty sure it's just Code Academy. As you can see, I haven't said breathe fire anywhere. So what this would normally return is punch to the chops. Imagine this said punch to the chops. However, because we uh, over uh, wrote it with breathe fire here, if I can indent this properly. Because we overwrote it with breathes fire, we get breathes fire. And just ignore that it said that, that should not happen. You would normally see punch to the chops if this didn't exist as code. Because all of this is inherited and the method fight calls punch to the chops. Even that is inherited, so it would call punch to the chops. That was just Code Academy being weird because even without actually uh, having this here, it allows you to move on for some, well, it did in a, a second ago. It did a second ago. Now you guys are going to think I'm lying. But yeah, if I call this, ah, there we go. Now I can actually show it. Punch to the chops. As you can see, it calls punch to the chops, not breathes fire. However, once we override it with uh, define fight return breathes fire exclamation mark and of course 
and we will sponge the chops. Now it breathes fire, which is what we were expecting to get. Okay, so now moving on to this. Uh, so on the flip side, sometimes you'll be working with a derived class or subclass or child class and realize that you've overwritten a method or attribute defined in the class base class, also called a parent or super class, that you actually need. Have no fear, you can directly access the attributes or methods of a super class with Ruby's built-in super word. So this is also quite useful, because sometimes you want to have a new name for a new method, well, a uh, an old name for a new method, but also keep the old thing. Well, you can if it's derived. So you have super optional args. So that can mean either the method or the what's it called the variables. So when you call super from inside a method, that tells Ruby to look in the super class of the. Oh, actually, okay. so you put the variables or the method inside some stuff. And these are the arguments that you might need. Uh, to look in the superclass of the current class and find a method with the same name as the one from which super is called. If it finds it, Ruby will use the superclass's version of the method. Instructions, we decided we want to do some chops punching after all. Let's do two things. Because a dragon is muscly enough to punch as well as breathe fire. If you think about it. And maybe you want Breathe's Fire to require mana, and we, when you don't have enough mana, you have to punch. So Ada puts, instead of Breathing Fire as the first line of our Dragon's Fight method, uh, okay, I have no idea what, where they're going with this, replace the return statement inside of Dragon's definition of, okay, replace the return statement inside of Dragon's Definition of fight, so in here we, we need to replace return with something with the keyword super. Okay, no need to pass any arguments to super uh, since creatures fight method doesn't take any. Okay, but we still need the brackets, the parentheses. And I'm pretty sure we need to remove that completely as well. I need to indent that. And indent it like that. Um, hmm. So we actually don't need any parentheses or any end after the super. All you need is just the super there. Uh, notice define end, class end, and the super just goes here with no end in this case. Uh, my guess is it's because fight, we're already in fight. And then we look for fight from super. So, yeah, moving on. There can only be one. Any given Ruby class can only have one super class. Some languages allow a class to have more than one parent, which is a model uh, ca called multiple inheritance. So, this can get really ugly really fast, which is why Ruby disallows it. Okay, then. Um, so, in other languages, I'm pretty sure C++ is one of them. Uh, I think what it means is you can have one parent class and you have a child class of that parent class and then a second level child class of the first level child class and so on and so forth. But I, from what I understand, Ruby doesn't allow that. Or maybe it's saying that some languages allow having one class, one child class to inherit from two parents. That might be a, a, at once. That might be a quite... That, that sounds quite different. So, however, there are instances where you want to incorporate data or behavior from several classes into a single class, and Ruby allows this through the use of mixins. We'll learn about mixins in a later lessons, uh, lesson. For now, we'll demonstrate what happens if you try to do multiple inheritance in Ruby. So, what it disallows, I'm guessing. Uh, the demo code we're about to show you includes a fancy trick. If you want to end the Ruby statement without going to a new line, you can just type a semicolon. Oh, thanks for telling me that now. Wish I knew that earlier. This means you can write something like this as class monkey semicolon end. That, that, that just changes everything. This is 
uh, time saver when you're writing something very short like an empty class or a method definition. I would personally love to use that instead of end on a new line any day, to be honest. Instructions, check out the code in the editor. See how we're trying to get dragon to inherit from creature and person. We'll get a superclass mismatch for class dragon error if we try this. Click some submit code to see for yourself. So dragon inherits from creature and dragon inherits from person. And we get an error. So okay, it wasn't talking of, it wasn't trying to do what I thought it would do. What if you, we did something like a uh, person inherits from creature, uh, scrap that, and then we have dragon inherits from person, what happens then, do we get an error, well let's reload because Kukada might be having some effect on that, uh, oh it does allow that, okay, so that changes my opinion of it, so you can have something inheriting from something else which inherits from something else. You can have multiple level inheritance. So that's good to know. However, if you try to inherit all at once, like it's trying to do here, so inheriting from two classes at once, uh, in a serial fashion, well no, in a parallel fashion, then you get super class mismatch. However, if you do it in a serial fashion, then it does work. So if you have any questions, do feel free to ask in the comments down below, as I said in the beginning of this lesson. It doesn't have to be connected to this lesson specifically, hopefully it is connected to Ruby though. Uh, other than that, if you enjoyed watching this video, please give me a like, share and subscribe. Uh, if you didn't, then of course dislike it and tell me how I can improve for next time. But until next time, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.